Hey guys, this is Ganon again. Um, in this video, we're going to go through a little bit more details about the PX80 workflow. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in. One of the important things about the PX80 is, you know, it is a handheld scanner. So the scanning process in and of itself is faster. You hold it, you walk around fluidly around the site. Um, but then once you take a scan, then what happens? And that's what we're going to talk about in this graph. Uh, so with the PX80 on site, you basically press start to walk around. You press stop, and that captures the scan. And with that, you can basically start, stop, start, stop as many times as you need to capture as many scans as you want. Um, once you capture all your scans on site, then you can process the final version of the point cloud. Processing happens on device on the PX80 itself. Um, you then export the data from the PX80 uh, to your desktop. And from there, that's where it kind of can splinter into a variety of different workflows, um, depending on which tools you're working on. Uh, you can register your point cloud together. If you have survey points, you can add the survey points on your desktop. Um, maybe bring it into uh, uh, geospatial tools. Maybe bring it into like AutoCAD or Revit. Um, so these final two steps can vary a lot depending on your needs. Um, but the, the first steps are always scan, capture the information on your device. Once you're done scanning in the field, then you click to process, and then you export it. And as we mentioned in another video, um, the PX80 is used in a variety of uh, environments, and each environment has a slightly different use case. Um, so a lot of what I'm going to talk about is kind of like the broad brush strokes. Um, today. But on the capture side, this is pretty much standard for all applications. You basically have up to 35 minutes per scan. Um, so you know your scan could be as short as like walking around for like three minutes on site, or it can go as long as 35 minutes. How much space you can cover really depends on the complexity of the space. If you're in a really complex, maybe like indoor environment, like a health healthcare facility, or an industrial environment, Maybe you're going to be on that lower end of the range of around like 15,000 square feet an hour because um, there's lots of turns, lots of corridors and gaps you have to cover. Um, whereas you're, if you're in a more wide open space um, walking around, you can easily be up to more like 40,000 square feet an hour. As you're holding it, you know, you hold it in front of you, kind of at your chest with two hands. Um, and you can either tilt it at an angle or kind of hold it straight up. It does have a 30 degree field of view coming out. So that's um, the angle that the LiDAR sees and it's capturing points from. So typically, you kind of, when you're holding at the angle, you're seeing the floor in front of you and a little bit in front, and then you're seeing the ceiling behind you. So typically, a process would just be to walk in a circle in a room, and you capture the floor and ceiling of that room. Um, and that's, that's very common if, if you're scanning multiple rooms to walk in the room do like a little teardrop circle, and then come back out of the same doorway. And then now you walked in a circle, captured all angles of the room. Um, and, and that's very common. Now on the iPad itself, we do have a real time slam preview. So you actually get to see what you're capturing as you're walking around. Um, so when you press start, it takes a couple seconds to get going. We give you some tips just on the screen. Um, and then as soon as you see the screen change, now you're capturing points and you can begin walking. As you walk, you'll see the line. Uh, this line is the path uh, of the operator as they're walking around. And also as you're walking, you see it's filling in more detail. You're capturing more detail of the building. Um, from here, you see like a top-down view. So you can kind of see the floor plan um, perspective of the site. Now this is this preview is much lower resolution than the final version just because we're streaming it to the iPad. It's also not as accurate. You can see it's like like really fuzzy. Um, so the main intention is not to show you like what the final point cloud is going to look like, but give you an idea that what you scanned um, was accurately captured. Um, and typically kind of walk in a circle and close the loop. It's not always required, but sometimes can be helpful. Um, 
And you also have options to drop tags. So as you're walking through the space, you can drop a tag and call it annotations. So you can drop an annotation to uh, make a note in that scene. And you can save a note exactly where you uh, like we're walking. So if you're walking by and you're like, hey, here's a hazard here, drop a tag, write hazard. Um, and you can go back and see exactly where it is in the point cloud and maybe send one of your guys out to that area to fix the situation. Now, once you've been on site and you captured all your scans, uh, you, you can select them all to process. So once they're processed, they turn green. Um, if it's not yet processed, it, it's still red here. Um, so you basically process all your scans on the PX80 device itself. And the scan time to processing time is roughly like one to four, one to five. So a 10 minute scan could take about 40 to 50 minutes. Um, so this really depends on like how long or how big of a project you're working on. Sometimes if you just take a couple of scans in the morning, you can go back to the office, have them processed, and then pull them up on your computer after lunch. Or if you're working a much larger project, maybe you scan all day, like nonstop, and then you uh, pull up, and then you let them process overnight, and then they'll be available uh, like the next day. There is post-processing um, available on the desktop. Um, so most people use the PX80 itself as like the default option, but we do have um, a desktop software that allows you to do the post-processing. Unfortunately, right now it's only uh, compatible with Linux, so that's the one bottleneck. Um, so that's why most people just use the PX80 itself. Now, once you have the data completely processed on the PX80, you can export it via USB 3, uh, via direct download uh, via Wi-Fi to your laptop, or an Ethernet connection. So USB or Ethernet is typically how you download that data. More, while we're looking at the screen, you can see this is how you uh, power on the PX80. Uh, this is the battery charge. See, there's like five bars here. Um, each battery, the internal battery for the PX80 lasts 40 minutes. But every external battery of the PX80 lasts for 90 minutes. And you can have as many external batteries as you need and hot swap them out and just plug them in this port here. So you can go up to all day scanning, just hot swapping out, out batteries. And we'll talk more about uh, the battery details in the next video. I'll give a little bit of contrast to like terrestrial scanning and what the workflow looks like. Um, there's typically steps of scanning. And once you have the individual scans from the tripod, then you typically have to register them together. Um, so in this example, you can see there's about 12 scan setups. Um, it took a little bit over an hour and a half to capture each scan. But then once you Get this data you have to com come back to the office and then do the registration and that's basically matching each pair so you're like say this one matches this one and this one you have to click points for this and this and then you pull this so it matches this and this um so that's kind of the the registration process um so once you get back to the office you then have to kind of like stitch all these together um and that's the beauty about like a slam system is you don't have to do that uh manual registration step because the algorithm does it automatically so as you walk through the environment, the algorithm is uh, tracking your position and basically kind of like automatically like stitching things together. Um, the only caveat I would say is each individual scan, the PX80 does that, like does that uh, stitching automatically. But as you get multiple uh, PX80 scans, um, you do have to manually register each scan. So like you see in this environment, those 12 scans was equal to about you know one PX80 scan. Um, depending on how large the environment is, like you know, we've seen things where it's like maybe up to like 40 tripod scans could be like one PX80 scan. Um, but then as soon as you get multiple PX80 scans, you still have to register those. So on a big project, you might have like four PX80 scans to register versus 100 like 20 tripod scans. So that's um, a little bit of the time savings that you see not only in the field of like less time waiting for each tripod to scan in the field, but also like less time in the office from not having to do the registration as much. And then to move from the kind of the hardware capture side to a little bit of the software process, before I mentioned um, there's tons of different use cases, tons of different ways people are using our system. To break it down 
into a little bit more detail, I'm just going to talk specifically about like working in Revit and bringing your scan data into Revit because that's very common. Um, but even here, you can see there's a lot of kind of variations of how people do that process. So once you have the data captured from the PX80, you have a point cloud. Um, a lot of times, people instead of bringing the point clouds directly into Revit, um, they might want to do like a couple of edits to them. So maybe reduce the number of points, make the file smaller, maybe crop out the sections of the building you don't care about to only import the areas you do care about. Um, maybe it's where it was a big project and you need like three to like six PX80 scans and you have to register them together. So do that registration. And that's uh, using a point cloud tool typically. Two common ones we recommend is uh, Cloud Compare or Vision LiDAR. Um, and if you already have a terrestrial system and already have um, point cloud tools you're familiar with and using a lot, uh, our data comes out as a LAS file and basically works in all those tools. So if, if you already have a point cloud tool you're familiar with, you understand this process, bring our LS, LAS point clouds into there. If you don't have anything yet, um, Cloud Compare and Vision LiDAR are two good options to get started. So once you bring the point cloud in here, you can register it, uh, simplify it, maybe crop some stuff out, uh, make those couple of edits you need. Um, and then as the goal to get into Revit and to deliver as built of sites, there's kind of different ways we see people do that. Uh, the most traditional way is um, important to recap, um, to then bring into Revit, convert it to like a RCS or RCP format, bring into Revit, and then from Revit start immediately um, basically kind of tracing and best fitting uh, the planes to uh, the model. The other way is uh, there are some automa automated features, such as clear, clear edges, edgewise product, which can automatically extract uh, vectors and family objects from the point cloud um, and basically produce them as uh, objects within the Revit model. And how edgewise works is that it automatically will extract the settings, extract the, the walls. Um, but it's only like 80% correct. So you still have to spend a little bit of time to manually tweak and kind of fix some things. Um, an example of that uh, here. So this is what the automated um, extraction looks like from ClearEdge is you can see this is like no human intervention. It's just bring our data into their tool and you automatically have all these walls extracted. The heights are correct, the lengths are correct. The only areas that you can see need a little bit of effort are um, like some of the times the intersections have a little bit of noise. So you just need to like go and edit and kind of bring things to connect correctly. So that's the little bit of editing that is required um, with this like automated workflow. And here's some examples from one of our customers of a more like active construction site of a lot of the data that they captured and how it works. Um, just so you can see more examples of what it looks like. So this here is Retrace. This is our image viewer. So however they walked around the site, you have the spherical pictures that you can look, pan around, and to uh, kind of see the context of the site. And then here's like the similar walkthrough path, but from uh, the point cloud perspective. So you have all the images as well as all the like point cloud data of the site. And in construction, it's commonly used to use a scan to verify what has been installed, what is the current pr uh, progress of the work, um, to see if things have been installed along the correct path, especially with like uh, MEP elements, make sure like, you know, the plumbing didn't like go rogue and go somewhere they weren't supposed to go and then have a potential uh, clash. So you can help with the coordination aspect. So 
saying you know how many points are they were able to capture in a certain time period. Um, also, just providing a lot of context for the existing conditions. Maybe you're starting a project, come in on board, and you need to have your team bring your team up to speed on what's currently on the site. Maybe your uh, as built are old or expired. Um, this is one way to kind of get everything up to speed. And final aspect, just to show um, what it looks like as you walk around. Um, here, you know, they're walking on the ceiling, walking uh, different kind of challenging environments to get to, but just kind of doing a slow and steady pace through the environment is how they captured the space. And here, I think, um, I think this is bringing it into Revit. Um, so you see all the data there, and then just kind of whatever your needs are, whether you need a um, map out the existing conditions, you know, map out the plan, you can do that. Maybe just see, um, do some QA, QC work, uh, you can do that. So kind of really whatever your needs are, um, this is a fast and easy way to capture that site data. So to recap, uh, the process is you scan on the device, uh, you can take as many scans as you need, then you, have all the um, scans processed on the PX80 itself. Once they're ready to go, you export them from the PX80 to your laptop, and from there, bring them into whatever uh, kind of industry tools you commonly use. And that's the overview of the workflow with the PX80. Um, in the next video, we're gonna talk about what is included in the package, um, kind of the whole bundle with the PX80 hardware and software that is included. Thanks.